I hate to lose a gig because I tell the client I need two 20 amp circuits and all they can provide, provide is one 15 amp. Mm. How can I be sure of what I need? And uh, he says, maybe you covered that in before I tuned in at the scheduled time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't read the whole message before I read it live on air, so I kind of missed that. Yes, we went back to our regular time at 8 o'clock. Sorry you slept through it. Anyway, uh, so I have to be careful. This friend uh, knows where I live, literally. He actually knows the door code to my house. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, so I think what I would communicate to the client instead of, you know, I wouldn't hold firm and say, if I can't have two circuits, I can't do it. I think I would just communicate to them and say, well, you know, the limitation is yours. You're the one who doesn't have enough power and that's no problem. I can accommodate, uh, but, but, you know, I can't do this, right? I can't just make magic amps appear out of the wall. So, uh, and we did address this a little bit earlier in one of these segments, but about measuring. And I, I just mentioned this device because it's cheap and you can get them everywhere. Uh, and I'm not an endorser yet. We've been trying for 10 years and I guess I'm never going to get it. But anyway, so, uh, I don't even, I don't even know who makes them. But anyway, uh, kilowatt is the name of the product on this one. And, uh, you can plug your stuff in and plug it into the wall and you can see how many amps it draws. And you could kind of add that up and you could do a little bit of system budgeting, you know, kind of like if you watched uh, Apollo 13 with, uh, you know, Tom Hanks, great movie where, but they're budgeting so they don't trip breakers when they restart the limb, right? Uh, this is the weird stuff that pops in my head when I'm sick, sorry. Yeah, that, yeah, that is kind of the weird stuff, yeah. Isn't that the best part about being sick though, or like the crazy, like, you know, dreams? Anyway, <laughs> no, so. no, those are bad because then, yeah. <laughs> should, I should, if I could remember them, I could write a movie and, and uh, retire. But anyway... So that that would be it, right? Is learning what those limitations are. You know, how hard can you hit the sound? What can you bring? What can you do for lighting? And then communicating that to, to the client and being accommodating. And certainly that's something I do in my work a day. You know, not every show is an arena show. Uh, I have to be somewhat conscious of what we're doing in a small ballroom or, you know, an outdoor show or, you know, an outdoor um, you know, not a concert, right? You know, where, where things have to be, uh, tailored to, to fit. And that's exactly what we do. We say, well, this is the, you know, amperage we need, and this is what the client wants for results. And can we balance the two? And if not, then we have some real conversations. You know, if the client says, oh no, I have to have this, you know, and you're like, well, then you have to have a generator, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, but at least the client understands the limitations. And I think the, the punchline to all of that is that you might lose the gig. But if you do, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna lose it to somebody who who doesn't know, and they're not going to deliver, and that client's never gonna make that mistake again, and you're gonna look like the hero. Chances are you won't you won't lose the gig. Chances so, are I think the client's gonna appreciate the, the homework you did. So you mentioned, of course, when we old school lights and old school sound system using all that electricity. Now you're basically able to use maybe a third the electricity you did at one time because of efficiency. What type of things within the DJ community, because obviously we have LED lights we didn't have that. We have more efficient digital amplifiers that we didn't have before. But what right. are some of the still high draw items that DJs might be using out there that they should be aware of that if they're utilizing that and their sound system and a, a little bit of light show that they could have problems? Foggers, hazers, spark machines, uh, you know, anything with, uh, you know, heaters or compressors or, you know, uh, industrial motor type things going on. I mean, anything like that uh, are going to be the highest draw by far. Uh, anything that's incandescent, if you still have any incandescent lighting effects, uh, halogen, whatever. Uh, but that's really it. I mean, I think, you know, by and large, everything else now, most of your amplifiers are class D, class H. They're super efficient. You know, we're talking about one amp draw, two amp draw for... Mm -hmm. A pretty decent speaker uh you can get a lot of stuff on a 20 amp circuit now you know yeah. you can get a lot of stuff and i think again if you start measuring that and adding it up and i don't know how everybody else rolls but me i've got databases of this stuff so i don't have to look it up twice right mm -hmm. i don't want to do the same work twice <laughs> so sure. you know then it's just a matter of tabulating uh you know all the things that i have in a show and looking at a total amp budget mm-hmm and seeing if, if there's going to be enough possible to uh, do what you need yeah and always give yourself a safety ratio, right? You got a 20 amp circuit. And if you come up with 20 amps load, I don't like the mods. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> I'd give myself, you know, a 20% cushion or so, mm -hmm. you know? So anyway. Excellent. 